2018 was the year of renewal for Shreveport Community Church. Not only have we grown numerically, but we've experienced a powerful increase in the presence and power of God in our midst. Testimonies of transformed lives, bondages broken, bodies healed, relationships restored, and financial breakthroughs have flooded in. We baptized 100 believers in 2018 and grew our servant leader core. 77 individuals completed our growth track classes and many more have begun the process. Our Highland Community Church Outreach has provided a training and counseling center for human trafficking victims through Purchased, as well as donating space to community renewal, and Pool of Shalom, which is a free medical clinic. In addition to our 2 o'clock service at Highland, we have helped Pastor Lawrence Hart establish a new congregation in our facilities. This is the fifth time we at SCC have had the honor of helping a new church get started. Using our buildings, we also donate our Highland Kitchen to those who feed the homeless. Evangel Christian Academy has certainly had a year of renewal. Our school facility was given a much-needed facelift. We even added staging, sound and lighting for a one-of-a-kind worship center. Our Evangel students are being called to full-time Christian service in unprecedented numbers as the Spirit of God continues to move on our campus. 2018 was a great year for Evangel football. We finished 10 years in District 1-5A with 10 district championships and a record of 51 district wins with only one loss. ECA was also honored to have the most valuable offensive and defensive players in the city this year. Evangel also won first place in vocal performance in both the high school and grade school divisions at the 2018 Citywide Art Break. The excitement has never been higher than now on the ECA campus. Our elementary school should have taken on the name Evangel Christian Leadership Academy, for in 2018, these kids not only received a second to none classroom education, they learn to articulate their faith and even to accompany themselves in leading worship. Renewal in the middle school this year was monumental. Again, worship was the centerpiece, including the junior high praise dance team. Sisterhood has been a smashing success in 2018, with hundreds of our ladies leading the charge in this exciting monthly outreach to the women of our city. Our dynamic children's ministry, SCC Kids, under the leadership of Pastor Stephanie McNeely, is not only attracting children and new families, but also so many new servant leaders as well. Our special outreaches that included Fam Jam, Godspell, and Summer VBS were simply epic, drawing crowds from all over the region. Winter Circle Camp was as great as ever in 2018. This year, over 500 kids heard the good news in Marshall Rick's legendary Cimarron City. 2018 was another great year for our School of Autism. This unique, one-of-a-kind ministry is changing children's lives and is also transforming their families. The miracle stories could already fill volumes, and this is simply more of God's work through SCC. Eagle Creek is in an exciting time of renewal. These wonderful men of Eagle Creek have become MVPs on our SCC campus. They have been set free to serve, and everywhere they go, they are making a difference. Our pastor serving Eagle Creek, Quentin Light, believes this bondage-breaking, life-changing ministry will double in 2019. So many of our graduates are now in full-time ministry, and there are many, many trophies of grace that are yet to be called. The Free State Student Ministry is thriving under the anointed leadership of Bethany Oprook, fresh back from four years at Jesus Culture, where she graduated in pastoral leadership. Bethany, daughter of Pastor Brian Oprook, is also a dynamic leader with a very focused vision for our SCC youth. Powerful worship, prevailing prayer, and a heart for missions took this group to a new high in 2018. In spite of a tough economic climate in our city, the giving at SCC was up in 2018, and in our ongoing debt reduction campaign, we were able to put an additional $571,000 on our mortgage. 
We have also seen a renewal of God's presence as our Spanish to English Holy Spirit Conference brought a new fire from Latin America to our congregation. 2018 was an amazing year for SCC, but in the words of Pastor Rodney Duran, get ready for 2019. The best is yet to come. The word is dream again. In 2019, the Lord has spoken to my heart that we are going to dream again. Now, I want you to understand what this word is not referring to. In no way am I suggesting that we rally around some weak, self-centered, New Age slogan about our personal goals and aspirations. I am not suggesting that we dream dreams of our own making from our own personal desires. I am rather declaring that the God-given, Holy Ghost-inspired, Christ-exalting, kingdom-centered dream that was once given to us individually as well as a church community is going to be revived in our hearts in 2019. We are going to dream again. Say it with me. Dream again. Now, we're going to dream again of reaching a city with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to dream again of a healing revival in this sanctuary. We're going to dream again of a miraculous release of finances to finish the work we have been called to do. We are going to dream again of a debt-free church and a debt-free school and debt-free lives. We're going to dream again of our children coming home to Jesus and Jesus coming to our homes. We're going to dream again of a church that walks in confidence because of our diversity, our unity, our transparency, our prosperity, and our authority. We're going to dream again of bringing our Savior, a Shreveport, a Louisiana, a national, and a worldwide harvest. Can you say amen? We're going to dream again of multiple services with every seat filled, hundreds of salvations and baptisms, and a whole generation of our young people called and commissioned into full-time ministry. We're going to dream again, understanding that we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we're able to ask or think or dream according to the power that works in us. Now, my springboard scripture for this message today is found in Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2 is a very interesting chapter in the Bible. The first of the chapter is an apocalyptic picture of judgment and destruction by an angry, unrelenting God. You don't think you're going to make it out when you read the first part of the chapter. There, there's just no way out. But by verse 18, things begin to sound more hopeful as the prophet begins to prophesy concerning another season of God's dealings. He says this, Then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. The Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you grain and new wine and oil, and behold, you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. I will remove far from you the northern army and will drive him away into a barren and desolate land with his face toward the eastern sea and his back toward the western sea. His stench will come up and his foul odor will rise because he has done monstrous things. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. How many of you are glad when the enemy comes against you and does monstrous things that you have a God 
who does marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you beast of the field, for the open pastures are springing up and the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. There's a lot of symbolism in this chapter but the symbolism here simply says that you are going to have a double portion of prosperity because of the favor of God. If you want to claim that dream, I want you to say amen. amen. The threshing floor shall be full. Say, Lord, I want to be full. Of wheat and the vat shall overflow with new wine and oil. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. God says this, because of disobedience, because of taking the wrong path, I did send some destruction your way, but I want you to understand that all of the destruction that has taken place in your life, I'm not only going to reverse it, I am going to restore even the time that you lost in the bitter dark years. That's the word of the Lord. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other, and my people shall never be put to shame. And in these last few verses of Joel chapter 2, it's apparent we've moved from certain irrevocable judgment to a season of sovereign outpouring of the Spirit of God on every thirsty soul. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly where I feel we are. Whatever bad happened to you in 2018 you kiss it goodbye. It is forever gone. You have moved out of that season of darkness into a wonderful season of light and blessing and favor that comes from the throne of God. And the Lord begins to talk in these last few verses about an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This has been a verse that has been used as a cornerstone stone verse for those that believe in the move of the Holy Spirit worldwide for many, many years. There's not a more powerful verse concerning the outpouring of God's presence in all of the Bible. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Hallelujah. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. May I just speak that over you right now? It shall come to pass afterward that our God will pour out his spirit upon all of you. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. I want to say it again because there's something alive in that declaration. It shall come to pass in 2019 that the Lord will pour out his spirit upon all of you at Shreveport Community Church. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Give the Lord praise if you know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Now God says there's a new generation ready to move forward in the power of a fresh vision. There are those in our midst that are receiving a dream for the first time. They're the young ones. But God also addresses those who once had a dream but have somehow lost their dreamer status He's talking about the older ones, not just chronologically, but spiritually. Those of us who've been faithful to God, who've shown up for church on Sunday morning, who have been at prayer meetings, who've sought the Lord, who've lived pure lives, who've believed for the best for our families, 
who've been generous with the house of God. We've walked in obedience, but somehow we've lost our dreamer status. He says, you older ones, those of you who once had a dream but somehow lost it or never saw it come to pass or had it diminished by the stress and demands of life. He says, God will send a move of his spirit that will cause you to dream the dream he gave you long ago. He will cause you and call you to dream again. Now, this is confirmed over and over in the lives of those in this book. Just walk through the book and you'll see this process happen again and again. Men and women who get a dream from God and then they grow older. But then they dream again. And when they dream again, that's when the dream actually comes to pass. I think of Abram who was given a dream of a son, an heir, a multitude of descendants God told him he would have. But he grew old. And honestly, he stopped dreaming. He was being blessed. He was fine in his relationship with God, but the dream was gone. But one day, God said, Abram, it's time to dream again. And Abraham became the father of many nations. Then there was Moses, raised in the palace of Pharaoh, who dreamed of delivering the Hebrew people. He was incensed by the way that the Egyptians treated those who were of his blood and of his kindred. But he became disillusioned, and he lost his dream until years later, in a place of hiding and isolation, God spoke out of a burning bush, and he said, Moses, it's time to dream again. Caleb had a dream of taking a mountain in the promised land, this remarkable warrior and faithful man. But he was deprived of his dream for 40 years by fearful, unbelieving people. But the day came, hallelujah, when he stood shoulder to shoulder on the front lines with the 20 and 30-something soldiers, and at 80 years old, he was ready to dream again. Samson lost his dream of being God's mightiest warrior and judge through sin, compromise, and deception. But the day came when in one shining moment, his strength returned. And after he was older, he began to dream again. And God made his last victory his greatest. David had a dream of building a temple for the Lord. It was the driving force behind his life. But he lost his confidence, his integrity, and his dream through a close encounter of the wrong kind. And God forgave him. God restored him. And God allowed him to dream again through his heir Solomon. And he was able to see the beginning of the temple of God built in the city of God. Peter had a dream of being a foundation stone of the church. And then he forfeited it. He forfeited it in open denial of the Lord. In fact, when we talk to this day about denial of the Lord, Peter is the one that we refer to. But on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 were added to the church, the Bible says, after his first sermon, and he began to dream again. What I can tell you is this, is that whatever your God-given dream was, God is saying it's time to dream again. What was it? Was your God given dream to be free from addiction? Was it to preach the gospel? Was it to have the best and the most godly marriage? Was it to see your family finally saved? Was it to be financially free? Was it to be a generous giver? Was it to own a successful business? Was it to be healthy and fit? Was it to minister to kids? Was it to prophesy? Was it to preach? Was it to be an intercessor? It's 2019, folks, and it's not too late. This is the year when the Lord says, you are are going to dream again. Every God-given dream is unique. But the process of receiving the dream is something we all share. You see, number one, 
The dream always begins with a word from God. If there is one heresy that is most pervasive in the contemporary church, it's the teaching that God exists to make our dreams come true. You do understand that's not what I'm preaching this morning. God does not exist to make your dreams come true. And when you begin to preach that, you are preaching a message that is certainly related to idolatry. All God-given dreams begin with a word from God. And that word is the revelation of the will and the purpose of the heart of God for our lives. Say this with me. Your plan, O oh God, is so much more fulfilling than mine. Your dream is so much bigger than mine. The Word of God says this, in Him we move and breathe and have our existence. Romans 12 and 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21 says, but know this first, that no prophecy or scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. In other words, you can't cut and paste when it comes to the word of God. No prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. You see, every time you have a God-given dream restored, it will be the result of a fresh prophetic word. The dream began with a word, and dreaming again will begin with a word. Now, that word may have been the first word God spoke to you years ago. You may have held on to it all of these years, and it's as alive and full of the fire and life of God as it has ever been. It may be a word that somebody just unknowingly gave you in a conversation. It just jumped out of their sentence right into your heart. It may be a word that comes from the office of a prophet. You know, next Sunday we strategically booked Pastor Gustavo Paez from Columbia to be here with us for Sunday morning through Tuesday night. Four prophetic services. There will be so many of you that are going to receive a powerful, supernatural word from God of encouragement. It will be amazing. Uh, this man is a pastor of a great church in Bogota, Colombia. He's a political leader, he's a great husband. He's a great dad. His children adore him. Uh, his oldest son has followed him in ministry and is a carbon copy. It's just precious to watch how tender he is with his little children. You see, the fact is, I don't ever stand anybody on this platform that doesn't share our culture and share our values. This guy is somebody that you would love to just hang out with, just ordinary as shoe leather and yet tremendously gifted when it comes to the word of prophecy. God has given him a supernatural gift. It was this prophet that God spoke to about the hurricane that hit Puerto Rico. Do you know that he went and preached in Puerto Rico and God gave him this word and he warned pastors that were under his authority and covering that they were to get ready. Do you know that those pastors got ready for that hurricane? And they're the only ones that didn't experience complete loss. He not only told them it was coming, he told them what year it was coming. And that they needed to get ready. As we prepare ourselves in this season, we're going to welcome the word of the Lord, aren't we? Here's what I want you to understand. If you're new in this walk and you're new at this church and this makes you a little nervous, don't feel at all guilty about sitting this out. Because you're going to get to a place of growth where maybe you will embrace some of these other things. But God is patient with your growth. And you're our little brother and sister. And we want you to grow at your own rate. 
So what I will tell you is this. If this makes you uncomfortable, that's all right. We were all uncomfortable with these kinds of things happening at one time in our lives. But I promise you, if you will give it a chance and you will come and you will hear the word of the Lord, God's going to minister to you. It's going to be the sweetest thing you've ever experienced. And you'll be bringing your friends here so that they can experience the supernatural power of God as well. It'll be Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesday night. And this will be our first prophetic conference. You say, Pastor, why did you have it at the beginning of the year? Because I want the word of the Lord to be the springboard for us to dream again. <laughs> Secondly, we dream again when we understand the dream is embraced through giving, prayer, and fasting. Anytime God gives you a dream, you're going to have to participate because God does nothing on his own on the earth, not since creation. His plan in the beginning is still his plan now. I will fellowship with you. I will empower you. I will communicate with you. I will give you authority on the earth. But you are to live your life. And you are to participate in everything I do. Everything that God does through giving you a dream has to do not only with his power, but it has to do with your obedience. In Joel chapter 2, once again in verse 14, there is a season when God calls his people to seek him. And this is what he says. He says, who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him. Here it speaks of offerings. A grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Question mark. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach that the nations should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God. And every time there's a national awakening and revival in all of Scripture, you're going to find three elements. You're going to find generous giving, fervent praying, and fasting. You see, here we have what David calls the humbling of the soul. The soul is the seat of the emotions. Psychiatrists and psychologists will also tell you that it is in your soul that you dream. This is where your dreams come from, your visions, your ideals, your goals, all from that soulish part of you. And what happens when we enter into participation in the dream that God gives us is that the soul comes in line with the purposes of God through various disciplines. David understood that. He said, I humble my soul with fasting and prayer. You see, when we bring divine order into our schedule, when we learn discipline in our choice of food, when we get healthy so we can embrace the pace of our dream again year, God begins to do things far more easily in us than he normally could do them. Prayer strikes at our self-centeredness and desire to be in control. Fasting strikes at our appetite and our need for pleasure and comfort. And our giving, our generosity, strikes at the heart of our selfish me nature. The next 21 days, we're going to fast and pray. And as you examine the fast of the Bible, you're going to see a wide variety of methods. You'll see that Daniel and his friends fasted meat, and they only ate vegetables. Now, I suggest to you the reason that they fasted sweet meats is because those meats had been offered to pagan idols. 
they were choosing not to have certain foods and they were at the same time choosing to eat others. That's why at the end of that period of fasting, those that were in charge of keeping them healthy came and looked upon their countenances and said, you're healthier than everybody else eating the diet that the king prescribed. And that's what our fasting is also all about. You see, I, I have also put what I'm going to be doing in the book because I'm not going to change anything that I've been doing. You say, well, pastor, that's a fast. I know. But I've been on the most effective fast of my life because I have had to choose to eat certain foods and not choose other foods since July 15th. And it has changed my life. I can tie my shoes, folks. It's amazing. <laughs> what I will say to you is this. If you would like to follow along with me, I put a simplified version of the plan I'm on right there. Now, after 21 days, if you want to continue, what I can tell you is I can put you in touch with a great guy that I call the guru who has been a godsend and a coach for me in nutrition. And he'd be glad to sign you up. We also have a young lady, um, Amy Barnhill, who is in our church. And she is a dietitian coach as well. And it's kind of cool that God is raising people up at the same time because he is getting us ready to dream again. See, this is what you have to understand. Everything is about everything. Somebody say amen. I said everything is about everything. Your physical being is about your spiritual being, is about your soulish being. Let me say it again. Your soulish being is about your spiritual being, is about your physical being. When you begin to bring the physical into order, the soulish realm is easier to conquer. When you bring the soulish realm into order, the spiritual realm is easier to conquer. You do not get to embrace a dream without participating. But ladies and gentlemen, if during this 21 days you will bring your life into discipline and you will begin to discipline yourself physically and in your soul and in your spirit, you will begin to give, you will begin to pray, you will begin to fast. I promise you at the end of 21 days, you will be healthier than you have ever been in your entire life, both physically and soulishly and spiritually, you'll be shouting, thank God, I am dreaming again. You and your family should also determine to bring an above your normal tithe offering to the Lord during this time. That's all I'm going to say. What we're saying is God we put you first in everything as you call us to dream again. Now, folks, I believe that right now at this moment, I just feel at this moment, there needs to be an energy that rises from our spirits to him. As we say this together, say it with me. God, we put you first in everything in this dream again year. Come on now, just tell him that that's exactly what's going to happen. Lift your voices to him. Lift your hands to him and say, Lord, we're going to put you first in everything in this dream again year. We bless you. We give you glory. Hallelujah. At 6 a.m. each morning, we're going to be praying. These prayer meetings are designed to last from 6 to 6.30. Say, well, we can't even get started in that period of time. Have you read what Jesus said about prayer, any of you? He said this, never think you're going to be heard because of your long praying. That came from Jesus. That didn't come from me. What I can tell you is this. When you come from 6 to 6.30, if you don't meet God here, then I will be absolutely surprised. Because every morning when I come from 6 to 6.30, I have a face-to-face -face encounter with God. The Holy Spirit has determined to bless us in these early morning encounters. So we want you to come at 6 to 6.30. You say, well, I can't make it. Then turn on the streaming. Get your children, those of you that are 50 and above, to show you how to do that. 
but you can actually receive the prayer meeting from 6 to 6.30 through streaming. But let me ask you this. Are you really as a believer going to live your life without ever having one time made a commitment to come 21 days to an early prayer meeting? Are you really going to let that happen to you? That your life would slip by and you never once made special sacrifices to get on your face before God? That you never once made special sacrifices to break out of your normal routine and do something that inconvenienced you so that you might enter a new dimension in the Spirit? Are you going to let life pass you by and look over your shoulder and see all of the things that you never, ever did simply because you had to make arrangements to do them for Jesus? That's kind of a guilt trip. Oh, I hope so. If I can guilt you into dreaming again, I'll do it. Because when you embrace your dream again, everything's going to change in your life. I said everything is going to change in your life. Hallelujah. In 2019, we're going to receive a prophetic word that's going to initiate and revive our dream. In 2019, we'll give, we'll fast, we'll pray so that we can embrace that dream. And through faith in 2019, we will believe until we see the dream materialize. Because you see, thirdly, a God-given dream materializes through faith. We dream again through believing. I was a speech student at Louisiana Tech University, and that meant I had to take classes in media. At that season, there was one guy above all the others, that was the guru of the emerging media scene. His name, Marshall McLuhan. Marshall McLuhan was noted because of his wisdom as a futurist. He was literally able to describe the next monumental step in media and how that would affect us culturally. He was also good for a quote, and my favorite quote of Marshall McLuhan is this one. I wouldn't have seen it if I hadn't believed it. You say, well, I've heard one almost like that. Of course you had. You heard, I, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it. Because that's the way the world lives. But when it comes to a God-given dream, our ability to dream again, it's just the opposite. I wouldn't have seen it if I hadn't believed it. Not I wouldn't believed it if I hadn't seen it. I wouldn't have seen it if I hadn't believed it. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In other words, everything you want in your dream again season is in the invisible. And unless you believe it, you will never bring it down. Unless you believe it, you will never see it materialize in your life. It is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And the word is clear that it is only belief that allows us to apprehend everything that we desire from God. Acts 16, 31. This promise was given to a pagan Philippian jailer who was probably a deist that believed just somewhere there are gods, just any old God will do. And this is what they said to him. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Now, how many of you understand that if that was given to a pagan, idol-worshiping deist in a Philippian jail who was probably filled with all kinds of debauchery, that Almighty God gives you that promise today as well. Believe and you will be saved and all of your house. John 20, 31, the Bible says, so these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John 5, 24, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who has sent me has eternal life. 
He does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. Believe, believe, believe. That's what you hear over and over and over again. And then there's the testimony. In Hebrews 11, of those who through faith, somebody say faith, conquered kingdoms, administered justice, gained what was promised, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, who became powerful in battle, who routed foreign armies. Women received their dead raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheep skins and goat skins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Listen to this. Yet none of them received what had been promised. Since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be complete. Or be made perfect. Do you, do you understand that the dream of every generation is important to the culmination of what God is going to do at the end of the age? Do you understand that these generations that are described here from righteous Abel all the way through the New Testament great men and women of God are not complete until we have registered our dream in heaven. Unless we have fulfilled our purpose in heaven. Unless God has helped us to get to the place that we know we are called to occupy. Oh, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, this is an amazing time and season for us. 2019, this is our year to dream again. But it doesn't just count for us. It counts for the kingdom of God from the first drop of blood that was shed at Calvary to the latest soul that simply confessed his name. We are part of of the whole picture. It's not just a little simple individual dream, some small personal fantasy. Oh no, my friend. We are a part of the eternal kingdom of God from eternity past to eternity future. We will not be complete without the others, and the others will not be complete without us found a fascinating book when I was visiting Des in South Carolina. It was called The Class the Stars Fell On. And it was about the West Point class of 1917. Somehow the West Point class of 1917 produced more world leaders, more generals, presidents, cabinet members, congressmen, senators, than any class in all of that history. It's okay. We'll get that. We'll get that. We, we'll get that later. We, we can get it later. Excuse me. We'll, we'll get it after church. We'll get it after. after. I'll, I'll get it. Thank you so much. He's working so hard. God bless him. He's by himself handing those books out to everybody. I watched him for about 10 minutes there. It's amazing. But we'll, we'll wait. Uh, I want you to look at verse 40 again. It actually saying, through faith these men and women saw their dreams materialize in authority, victory, miracles, blessings, provision, prosperity, healing, favor, endurance, even martyrdom, and timeless testimonies. But here's what I want to tell you. It's our time. We are the class of 2019. We're the class the stars are falling on. Because we are the latest generation 
of the redeemed children of Almighty God who have been given the keys to the kingdom. What I want you to understand is nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. If your number one dream is that a family member come to Christ this year, stand to your feet and look at me. Look at me right here. That's your number one dream. You say, as I dream again, this is what I dream. Look at me. Look at me. Listen to me. Nothing is impossible to those who believe. If, if your dream is this, to get your family out of financial pressure because it has been such a scourge to you and you're ready to live in freedom, stand to your feet right now. You'll say, Pastor, it's been painful. It's been tough. Look at me, folks. Look at me and listen to me because I've got a word for you about dreaming again. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. There was a gentleman in Florida that sat in an audience like this. Remain standing, please. He sat in an audience like this, and he heard a word like this, and he didn't know what to think about it because he worked in the sewers of Miami. And this man was talking about how that God will give you a dream, and he will give you an idea that can change everything for you overnight. If you are willing to dream, if you're willing to embrace what God puts in your heart. And then the man thought about drawings that he had made back home in a tablet. He walked up. He wasn't a communicator. In fact, he didn't feel worried that he'd even be in the speaker's presence. The speaker was an entrepreneur that, entrepreneur that had made hundreds of millions of dollars. And he said, Sir, can I talk to you and show you some of my drawings? And the man was just gracious. He said, absolutely, I'd love for him to see them. He sat down, showed him the drawings. The gentleman was so impressed that he said, you know, uh, I think I'd like to go into business with you. What do you think about that? I'd like to have 51%. The man said, that sounds fine to me. The man's first check from an invention that took a task in the sewer that he was having to take care of from being a all-day job to a 45-minute job and began to be used by every metropolitan area in America. His first check was $5 million. So cool. When he went back to work. You say he went back to work? Yeah. He asked his now mentor in business, I know I've got this money now and i got this other business, but you think I could just go ahead and work? I only have to work six more years before I get my retirement. He said, I think that would be fine. And so every day for six years, there was a Holy Ghost dream again millionaire that was going into the sewers of the city and doing his job. What I'm telling you is this. When I say to you, when I look at you and I say to you, nothing is impossible. It will give you courage, hopefully, to pick up that dream that seems like it will never come to pass because God is able. And if he has put that in your heart, then I can tell you he can make it come to pass. How many of you right now will say, Pastor, I got stuff in my life. I just got to get right <laughs> in 2019. This has got to be my year to get stuff right in my own life. Stand with your feet right now. Come on. Stand if you say, I just got to get some stuff right. I, please, stand to your feet all over this place. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Look at me and listen to me. Nothing is impossible. I said, nothing is impossible. God says, if you believe, nothing is impossible. How many of you say, Pastor? I, I'm just at a place in my life where 
Only God knows where I am, but believe me when I tell you, there is a need. I can't articulate it, maybe, but I got something in me. I, I got to have something change. Do you know why men and women sometimes go middle-aged crazy? It's because they don't know that there's a verse about them in the Bible. They turn to other things looking for an elevated season of excitement or fulfillment because they don't know there's a verse about them in the Bible. Here it is. Your old men shall dream dreams. Because if you're halfway through, maybe you're in some halftime adjustments, you're in your 40, 50, 60 somethings, let me tell you something. God not only has not forsaken you or forgotten you, the word he's saying to you is this it's time for another dream. You are going to dream again. Stand with me, please, all over this place, everyone. I want you to put your hands together and I want you to thank God that he hasn't given up, that he's allowing us to dream again. Come on, everybody in this place. Everybody give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Listen to me, everybody here. I, I can tell you that there's value in this and what I'm about to say. There's so much value. So I can't dismiss it as not having value. There's value in this. There are people that feel like walking aisles and making commitments that, you know, well, that's kind of passe. It's not. It really isn't. Because anytime I want to move spiritually from here to here, and I can do a prophetic act of moving physically from here to here, then it has helped me move spiritually. And what I will tell you today is this, is that some of you came because on this first Sunday, you want to make a new commitment to walk with God closer than you ever have before. I want to give you a chance to walk the aisle and let me pray for you. Will you do it? I want you just to get out of that aisle. I want you to come and stand right here. You say, I came here because I, I really wanted on this first day to make a commitment to walk closer to the Lord than I ever have. You say, I, I really did. I, I, that's why I wanted to come today is to make a commitment to walk closer to the Lord than I ever have, even than I ever did in... 2018. Come on, just step out. We're going to come down here. We're going to worship just for a moment, and then we're going to pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. your hands right now. That means we're wide open to Jesus. We're wide open to everything he wants to do. Those of you that are standing throughout this auditorium, the Lord knows your heart. He knows you're reaching for him. Hallelujah. Lift your hands all over this place, and I want you to say these words with me. Lord Jesus, like never before in all of my life, I want to seek you. I want this to be a new beginning for me in every way. I desperately need you. And I want to need you more than I have ever needed you. And I pray the simple things that I discount will become holy to me. I pray your word will become holy again. The Holy Bible. I pray that my time with you will become holy again. Your holy presence. And I pray, Lord God, that my life will be surrendered to you as a living sacrifice. God, forgive me for ever indicating to you that you're not worthy of who I am. God, you're not only worthy. I know in my heart that you are what I need above all else. Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus you'll do something here that will cause all of us to dream again. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands and just ask him to help you dream again. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh, I can't.
give you glory, Lord. I give you praise. Two thousand eighteen was the year of renewal for Shreveport Community Church. Not only have we grown numerically, but we've experienced a powerful increase in the presence and power of God in our midst. Testimonies of transformed lives, bondages broken, bodies healed, relationships restored, and financial breakthroughs have flooded in. We baptized 100 believers in 2018 and grew our servant leader core. 77 individuals completed our growth track classes and many more have begun the process. Our Highland Community Church Outreach has provided a training and counseling center for human trafficking victims through Purchased, as well as donating space to community renewal, and Pool of Shalom, which is a free medical clinic. In addition to our 2 o'clock service at Highland, we have helped Pastor Lawrence Hart establish a new congregation in our facilities. This is the fifth time we at SCC have had the honor of helping a new church get started. Using our buildings, we also donate our Highland Kitchen to those who feed the homeless. Evangel Christian Academy has certainly had a year of renewal. Our school facility was given a much-needed facelift. We even added staging, sound and lighting for a one-of-a-kind worship center. Our Evangel students are being called to full-time Christian service in unprecedented numbers as the Spirit of God continues to move on our campus. 2018 was a great year for Evangel football. We finished 10 years in District 1-5A with 10 district championships and a record of 51 district wins with only one loss. ECA was also honored to have the most valuable offensive and defensive players in the city this year. Evangel also won first place in vocal performance in both the high school and grade school divisions at the 2018 Citywide Art Break. The excitement has never been higher than now on the ECA campus. Our elementary school should have taken on the name Evangel Christian Leadership Academy, for in 2018, these kids not only received a second to none classroom education, they learned to articulate their faith and even to accompany themselves in leading worship. Renewal in the middle school this year was monumental. Again, worship was the centerpiece, including the junior high praise dance team. Sisterhood has been a smashing success in 2018, with hundreds of our ladies leading the charge in this exciting monthly outreach to the women of our city. Our dynamic children's ministry, SCC Kids, under the leadership of Pastor Stephanie McNeely, is not only attracting children and new families, but also so many new servant leaders as well. Our special outreaches that included Fam Jam, Godspell, and Summer VBS were simply epic, drawing crowds from all over the region. Winner's Circle Camp was as great as ever in 2018. This year, over 500 kids heard the good news in Marshall Rick's legendary Cimarron City. 2018 was another great year for our School of Autism. This unique, one-of-a-kind ministry is changing children's lives and is also transforming their families. The miracle stories could already fill volumes, and this is simply more of God's work through SCC. Eagle Creek is in an exciting time of renewal. These wonderful men of Eagle Creek have become MVPs on our SCC campus. They have been set free to serve, and everywhere they go, they are making a difference. Our pastor serving Eagle Creek, Quentin Light, believes this bondage-breaking, life-changing ministry will double in 2019. So many of our graduates are now in full-time ministry, and there are many, many trophies of grace that are yet to be called. The Free State Student Ministry is thriving under the anointed leadership of Bethany Opbrook, fresh back from four years at Jesus Culture, where she graduated in pastoral leadership. Bethany, daughter of Pastor Brian Opbrook, is also a dynamic leader with a very focused vision for our SCC youth. Powerful worship, prevailing prayer, and a heart for missions took this group to a new high in 2018. In spite of a tough economic climate in our city, 
The giving at SCC was up in 2018, and in our ongoing debt reduction campaign, we were able to put an additional $571,000 on our mortgage. We have also seen a renewal of God's presence as our Spanish to English Holy Spirit Conference brought a new fire from Latin America to our congregation. 2018 was an amazing year for SCC, but in the words of Pastor Rodney Duran, get ready for 2019. The best is yet to come.